This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbil Mac, a better wood planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Finally, we're back with German cars. This is Volkswagen ID7 GTX Tourer with a 91 kilowatt hour battery. Ooh, I'm getting excited. Can't wait to do 1000 kilometer challenge. Try to make some uh, Sunday, drive hap Sunday drive happening. I'm not sure uh, if it's warm enough. It's still springtime, we are just in April now. So, but okay, anyway, today I'm gonna to do range tests. Wanna see how far we can drive, wanna measure the capacity of the battery. So, um, yeah, oh, it's a beautiful car. Oh, station wagon, perfect family car. You know, people ask, like, uh, what is the point? I mean, why do we need big SUVs? Well, we don't need big SUVs, but you know, here we have plenty of space. For people that has some hobbies with a big trunk, with ski opening, with anhanke kumplung, with all-wheel drive, you know, stuff that the Casper, oh, I mean, the Insta doesn't offer. Yeah, Casper, fun fact, Casper is a name in Korea. Of the Insta. But okay, whatever. Um, see here? 100.5%, yeah. 85 kilowatt hour reports, okay. Uh, I'm gonna res reset some trip meters here, data. It's kind of clumsy, you have to go here, you have to go to the vehicle. Oh. oh, switch on the ignition. Okay, status, distance, reset this. There's no confirmation. <laughs> okay, and then we should have some, wait, 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 shit. Uh, and then uh, there is no back button here. No, I was missing a back button like in most other cars. Since start, long term, we reset this. Yes, there, there is there is a confirmation there. But okay, um, first now I have to go to the kindergarten with Isabel. Yeah, here's the Cybex, ready to go. And then we can proceed to the range test. Well, let's check the weight of the car. This is a different uh, cycle, even a different day. Front axle. 1180 the whole car oh 2420 so that's 160 kilograms more than the rear wheel drive and a smaller battery well it makes sense a drivetrain a front and a bigger battery all right, we're now at Minnesun. This will be the starting position for a while now because there's some roadworks over here. So yeah, we just reset since start and then we drive a little loop. Not sure, yeah, I usually drive over here the tongue in the back, but it's cold now in the morning hours. Uh, yeah, four degrees Celsius, but uh, we can't wait too long because this is going to take a while, you see. Still at 88%, the car claims 436 kilometers of range. And then after this, I also have to do um charging test. Oh, we're on the moon. Let me see how is Mjösen over here today. Oh, slight wind here, but I see further down there, there's no wind at all. That's great. We have to cruise 122, no, 123 to match 120 speed. Yeah, okay. Temperature is slowly rising, 4.5 degrees Celsius now. Well, back at the starting point, uh, consumption was 230 watt hour per kilometer. You see it goes up now because we're stationary. But for the 90 test, we're going to go all the way to Rutsuk and back again. That is 146 kilometer loop. And here you see that the car estimates will arrive at 55%. I'm not sure how it estimates this because it's a motorway stretch and we're going to go at 90. Uh, but uh, I will also measure the distance error. So if we go uh, here back to home, um, I don't want to reset this because I'll be counting the total distance uh, to measure the kilowatt hour. So we just write down 96.9 kilometers and then after the loop, we see how much it has increased. Okay, and so again, we need to reset. Well, uh, I forgot to show you mode. I'm using eco mode and I'm also using uh, D, D mode, but okay. Uh, since, <laughs> yeah, since, st they haven't fixed this yet. Long term, when you saw long term, but here, since charging, there's plenty enough space to sit. German engineering. I mean, oh, German engineering is, is the best, but during sof German software. Uh, oh. Okay, let's go. Oh yeah. 
93 kilometers per hour, 90 GPS speed. Temperature is rising, 7 degrees Celsius now. Yeah, still almost no wind. Okay, but we have auto stair. It's pretty good, nice and smooth. And then here I can show you if you're interested. Uh, the optimizer. It will show you that if you plug in now at 71%, uh, we get 76 kilowatts. But then if you preheat for 20 minutes, you get 86 kilowatts. So this is wonderful technology. Yeah. And you can see here that the battery is at 17 to 22 degrees Celsius. So it's actually scavenging heat from the battery now. Wow, it's nice and beautiful at Miosa today. But the green has not arrived yet. It's coming soon, I guess. So yeah, because it's cold outside, see only 3.5 degrees Celsius and the consumption is not that low, fortunately. Versus a summer test I had with a, uh, well, the same car basically, but just smaller battery. Uh, then it was 137 or something watt hour per kilometer. But okay, well, we can't wait until spring before we test this car. <laughs> Man, this piano black needs to go. See, depending on uh, which direction uh, we are facing the sun, there will be reflections here, there will be reflections there, and now also reflection here in the center console. Well, this time it was 165 watt hour per kilometer, and then a distance here, I can check the distance error. But, uh, hmm, so we are still at 43%. Temperature has gone up again. Uh, maybe we can do another run. Let's do another 120 test. Okay, another run, 123, now it's 8 degrees Celsius. Let's see how the higher temperature affects the consumption, right? Alright, this time it was 220 watt hour per kilometer. So when the temperature rises around 5 degrees Celsius, then that's the result of it. Uh, okay, let's try the 90 test again then. Uh, 10 degrees over here at Minnesota. Right, um... I don't have enough juice to go the full loop. Down to 26%, 119 kilometers of range. So I'll probably just go halfway here somewhere and back again. Well, this time it was 160 watt hour per kilometer. That's 5 watt hour per kilometer lower than the previous test. And it was around 10 degrees Celsius average versus uh, 8 degrees. Well, okay, but uh, I think we have tested the consumption enough now. Uh, we are at 15% and I want to bring it low so we can do the charging test and also measure how many kilowatt hour we have. So if we look here in the in the optimizer, now it tells me that, uh, okay, 158 now and then 185 kilowatt possible. This car, because it has a bigger battery, it can take 200 kilowatt. Oh, okay. Hmm. Let's preheat now then. Yeah, you see, 5.4 kilowatt auxiliary consumer. This is, uh, I'm not sure if it's heat pump or PDC. I don't hear the heat pump work too hard. Uh, okay, so now it's heating up the battery. We can see it is also here, it will slowly go up. But overall, this ID7 is wonderful, except for one thing. Okay, listen. What the heck is that shit? All right, we are now at Ionte. I'm getting ready for the charging test, but um, we are now down to 10%. Wow, it's 13.5 degrees over here. Nice and warm. And then if you look at the totals here, 382.5 kilometers multiplied by the consumption since charge, 197 watt hour per kilometer. And then added, well, okay, it was 9.2 kilowatt hour just now. Then I get 84.6 kilowatt hour net capacity. So that's close to 85 kilowatt hour we initially had in the display here. There's only 0.4 kilowatt hour loss. All right, really, very good. Um, now, if we go here and then go to charging and the optimizer, yeah, in five minutes it will hit the maximum temperature. So it's still heating up, but not that fast. It's pulling three kilowatt for the battery heater right now. Yeah, almost ready then. All right, we're charging now. The battery heated up to 23 to 27 degrees Celsius. Oh, look at it, it's pulling 505 amps. Hey, wait, can it pull more? Uh, 
most likely not, but uh, almost 200 kilowatt. Oh, it's game over. Wow, I can't wait to test 1000 kilometer challenge on this. Wow, it actually charges faster than 200 kilowatt. So what you see here is what goes into the battery. When you poke on a uh, car scanner or scan my Tesla and look at the canvas, this is what goes into the battery. Some cars like the Korean cars and actually even Tesla lately, but not before some updates, will show you what the charger delivers. So here we have 201 kilowatt. Well, we can check outside. Oh, it's, spring is coming. But let's check on the I own this screen, it might report higher, and actually it reports 200 because right now there is no cooling going on. But eventually, this number might be higher than what we see in the car. All right, there's a new day. We are now at uh, Soko K Dalgen, and um, I just want to see. Now it's supposed to be 19.5 degrees outside. It's two in the afternoon, and that is more or less the same as the test we had uh, last year. It was 20 degrees and we managed to get 137 watt hour per kilometer, but it's a gravel drive. So I'm gonna try now since uh, charge. Yeah, okay. Uh, can I reset it? No, I can't. Uh, since start, okay. Just reset since start and then we go for it. We take a loop here and then a little bit here, just a shorter loop and see how low can we go. All right, nice weather. Uh, today is supposedly the warmest day of this week. So this, I have my chance now. This is the chance. So yeah, 19 degrees Celsius outside, supposedly. Now, yeah, cruising at 90 again. We have eco mode. You can see that the, the trees there even go in the mold here. So now we see. And also one thing that is somewhat important is that if you look here, the battery temperature is sitting at 26 to 32 degrees. So it's not over hot. So uh, I just hope that uh, the car is not actively cooling the battery, which means spending extra energy. Okay, the result, 154 watt hour per kilometer at 19 degrees Celsius. I think it is simply not possible to go any lower. And yeah, I mean, we don't have any, we have 19 inch wheels, you know, we don't have any crazy wheels. And then here, see here, climate control, we have it on low, you know, that side is off. We have drive mode and eco. So everything has been done to go as low as possible, but, uh, I think we cannot go that lower because this is an all-wheel drive GTX. Oh yeah, we're back home now. So I forgot to mention something. The battery temperature, you see it's 27 to 29 degrees Celsius. It did not drop much at all during the test drive, which indicates that uh, the car did not spend extra power on cooling the battery actively. So at least uh, I have no other explanation to why the consumption is higher on this all-wheel drive GTX versus the rear-wheel drive other than that. Um, I also heard this from some guys in the live stream is that uh, the all-wheel drive, the, the front motor has some resistance in the motor itself and the gearbox, reduction gear, whatever, when you're just spinning like that, even though it's spinning kind of freely, versus if there was no motor there. Uh, the same thing seems to be the case for uh, Tesla also, that the rear-wheel drive Teslas, they are more efficient than the all-wheel drive. Seen this with other cars, but it seems like some cars with um, without any decoupling on the front motor, they seem to be significantly thirstier in the all-wheel drive version. Like I think Volvo, uh, maybe because they are always per uh, they're, they're permanent all-wheel drive. I-Pace, but I-Pace only has all-wheel drive mode, but maybe that's why it's kind of thirsty. And uh, but there was one exception, which is Tesla Model S old one from 2016, 15, roughly when they came up with the dual motor, then the, the, the 85D, you guys know, the 85D is more efficient than the, the regular 85 rear wheel drive because the rear wheel drive had a big inefficient motor, but the 85D had two smaller induction motors and they will run on the front motor most of the time. That's why it was efficient. But in this case, I think what I've shown now is that this is slightly less efficient than the rear wheel drive. And then means that practically the range here, because if you have a bigger battery, you get roughly the same range as the uh, rear wheel drive, 82 kilowatt hour. Yeah, but of course you get some benefits with, you know, with the GTS, you get more power, you get better grip and so on for winter. 
uh, Norwegians probably want this, but also everything just compensates for it. It costs a little bit more, but it also charges faster. So overall, even in 1000 kilometer challenge, this car is roughly the, <laughs> it is more or less the same in speed and performance than, yeah, as the rear wheel drive. So there you guys have it, you can choose. Or if you want to go for the ultimate range, you can get the big battery, 91 kilowatt hour with the rear wheel drive, then you get the best. But um, I think I won't be able to do uh, one, uh, um, Sunder drive, it will take some time, but I estimate that the range will be slightly lower than, uh, than the rear wheel drive simply because it's less efficient. So I expect around 130 something, 135 maybe watt hour per kilometer in the Sunday drive. But right now it's simply not warm enough in the morning hours and the afternoon. So that's why I don't bother doing it. But overall, we've tested it now. This GTX is still nice, it's fun to drive, but not as efficient, yeah. So anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.